Hey everyone, my name is James and welcome back to Chippy's Couch. So it's my goal with today's Terraria episode to give you quite a lot of boss action and that's why I'm starting today's episode at night. I booted up my Terraria and Terraria was like, the air is getting colder around you. And just like before, I can't remember what that means and it means Skeletron Prime. So we're going to be doing Skeletron Prime today and I'm going to be using this brand new weapon called the Deadly Khan... I have no idea how to pronounce that. My English tongue, it doesn't know what that is. That's all right. But I wanted to use this weapon because it reminded me so much of the one we used in Terraria Overhaul. I thought it was very exciting. Now this episode wasn't meant to start so dramatically, but it just kind of turned out that way. I did literally log on and the game was like, all right, you ready for a boss fight? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, it's going to be free, right? It's free? I'll take free. Free is great. So, big problems with this weapon, and that is, it doesn't seem to actually uh, hit the boss. <laughs> I feel like I've uh, completely messed that part up. But, we do have uh, these shuriken, and these shuriken will actually ricochet around, so that's great. And our exhaustion is full. I don't get why it makes a bubbling noise, though. Like, what's going on with that? When you're tired, you just spit out a bunch of bubbles? What does that mean? Okay, let me uh, use this. But yeah, I'll go back to this. Let's see how it does. I think you have to be very, very close to use this. But the goal was, was to essentially allow the knives to drop down onto different components. So yeah, I guess it's kind of working that way. But yeah, welcome back to Chippy's Couch. I want to say thank you to everybody that checked out the last episode. Of course, I appreciate it a whole bunch. Hope you've all enjoyed your weekend. I, uh, I never ended up posting yesterday, and it's because I went to go see uh, It Chapter 2, and I never realized it was going to be so long, because the film is like three hours, and then you slap a bunch of adverts in there, and you know, you get some popcorn, some drinks, it's more like three hours and a half, so I never got back home in time, and, uh, and I was afraid, you know, I wanted to get back to bed, you know, killer clowns on the loose and all that. But that was a, a great movie, man. I really, really enjoyed that. As you can see, two of the arms have disappeared. Now, I don't know if that's because I took them down or um, or it literally is just doing so well. All right, exhaustion is fine. We're going to spit this out. You know what? If this wasn't a free fight, this is definitely one of those fights where you could do both of the uh, mechanical bosses in the same night if I had a little bit more time. Because this is going amazingly. Like, this is going as, as well as I hoped it would. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. Cool. Okay, so both of the um, both of the arms have been removed. So now it's just a case of uh, killing the head, which is going to be the easiest bit. I almost feel like this fight was easier than actual Skeletron. Definitely easier than um, <laughs> than the last boss, the Destroyer. But I do want to see what would happen if I use one of these bad boys on the uh, on the Destroyer. I feel like it would look amazing and it would do amazing as well. This is just really cool. Let's see what kind of damage we can do if we're, if we're actually firing on it. Let's make sure everything drops down. I wonder if it's better if, if you do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, some of the weapons I noticed in the uh, in the throwing class, they're better if they've had a little bit of a drop on them. Hmm, okay, cool. Well, we're very close to the end. This is great. This has gone absolutely perfect. Okay, 600 left. <laughs> and that's it. It's done. And we also got another piece of uh, Consolaria. Thank you very much. Okay, open this up, and this is everything that we get. So, Souls of Fright, that will allow us to make a new weapon, I believe. I saw it yesterday, and I wasn't exactly sure what it was going to be. Yeah, this was it. It was the Spark Taser. So, I'll make that. Why not? Let's give it a little go. So, Spark Taser, 72 plus 2 throwing damage. Throws a static arching slash of electricity. Overuse of this weapon causes exhaustion. Okay, well, it was probably worth making. It's alright. <laughs> it's okay. I would have to see what it's like once you hit an enemy. It might be good for uh, for the twins, actually, considering that fire's so straight and so fast. And it's deadly, which is even better, because look at all those buffs. Let's try it on one of these bunnies. One of these poor, poor bunnies. Okay. Nah, it's just a generic shooting thing. That's alright. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to wait until the next night time, and then we'll be doing the twins. So I just had to pause my game because it's now night time in Terraria, but it's also going to be a terrible night. And I had a little Google, that means the twins. So we've had two free mechanical bosses within the space of like two nights, which is amazing. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, Terraria R and Jesus. So let me buff up, and I'll get ready for this. It should spawn in in a second. This will give us a little bit of time to uh, to heal up and such. Okay, all right. Maybe I'm changing my mind about this weapon. 
as you can see, it has little bolts of electricity, which is kind of cool. I like it. A little bit better than a generic taser. So I was having a little think about what we can do to advance the character from the moment of the mechanical bosses to the lich, which is the next boss. And when I thought about it, after you've made this weapon right here and you've made the taser, there's no more improvements that you can make for a thrower, simply because we've already got the best armor, we've got the best weapons. So I was thinking if you were to speed run the mod, for example, if you were doing thrower, you could actually cut this part out because you don't need to do the twins, which is kind of cool. Like I never really thought that would be the case, but yeah, there it is. All right, this has gone perfectly so far. Like look at that damage output. That is really, really good. Okay, so I might be able to, uh, if I can just not land in a hole, this would be perfect. But I'm also thinking there's probably a point where some of these shots are hitting, but they're also bouncing in between the two different enemies. So this actually ended up being a way better weapon than using the, uh, the multiple knives, because you would have to be very close to use the multiple knives. We could probably use it here, like this. Oh my god, I wish I had shine. It is proper dark. Okay, let me, let me save my exhaustion anyway. I want to be using this, really. I think this is going to be way better. Okay, let's keep this going. I just think I'm going to take this boss down so quickly. If I don't land in a hole, and if I can manage to, like, maintain myself, this is going to go great. Okay, right. Let's start working on the uh, the other eye as well. So I'm actually going to... This platform is what I built for, uh, for Skeletron, but I'm actually going to be using it now to circle the boss. That's my goal. I think this is going to be great. Really does suck about the exhaustion though, because we're kind of uh, missing loads of chances to hit. But I feel like once I get another full meter of exhaustion, this is going to be perfect for doing uh, the rest of this boss. Okay. Oh god. Oh no. Every time I get hit by the laser, it drags me into the flames, which is not what you want. Okay, so that's one eyeball down. Now I know this is super dark. Mobile users, you best crank that brightness on to full. Get up, go to the light switch, turn that bad boy on as well. Maybe get a flashlight, because this one is dark. Really, really dark. Oh, this is perfect, because I don't even need to be that precise. Like, some of these shots are missing, but the electricity is doing more damage. That exhaustion meter really punishes you if you uh, abuse it. Okay, and with that, there we go. All right, we did it. <laughs> We actually did it. I want to check over here. Was there any uh, drops from the, the first eyeball? Was there any kind of... Yeah, there was actually. So great. Okay. I've run out of uh, recall potions, but that's all right. Let me slap up a few uh, torches here. It is awfully dark. So I'm going to have to leave you guys for a little bit more time now because we're going to have to wait until another night has passed. But I'll open this up and it gave us, you know, just all the stuff that we had before. So I'm going to be crafting the item for the Lich, and what it is, is some Hello Bars, uh, some Pumpkins, and some Souls of Night. So I'll see you in, uh, in like 14 minutes for the next fight. Okay, so it's almost night time, and it's time for the Lich. And then it just dawned on me that there's probably something I can be doing that's very productive for the character. This is always the case. When I play a lot of modded, I seem to forget about a lot of the items that are available to you in vanilla Terraria. Today's item that I forgot, drumroll please, Chlorophyte. Chlorophyte is a thing that I should have been getting while waiting for night time. It's too late now, it's not also something I'm that, that bothered about. So let me show you what you can make. If you get Chlorophyte bars, you my friend can make yourself some Chlorophyte Tomahawks. We like Tomahawks around here, they're pretty great. They got us demonetized at one point, maybe. Uh, so I could have made a whole bunch of these. Now these are consumables, which is great. That's what you want because then you can flip between the two different types of exhaustion and non-exhaustion. And they do 79 plus 2 damage. So for comparison, these do 66 plus 2 and that's what they are. So this would have been a good upgrade for this fight. It also dawned on me that we could be getting life fruit. Now I did have a little look for life fruit. Um, but while I was in there, I wasn't really thinking about Chlorophyte, but I didn't manage to get any life fruit anyway. I was actually in the jungle looking for a magic mirror, because I do need one. One would be very useful. So basically, I failed as a human being and as a Terrarian to get everything sorted. So hopefully, I will be prepared enough for this fight. I'm beginning to think that I probably will. You know, I, I don't doubt myself that much. Let me have a little buff up. We're going to do this. I'm excited. You guys are going to be along for the adventure. So, presenting to you, the Grim Harvest Sigil, with a throwing class. 
Welcome, the Lich. Here we go. That was my best wrestling, uh, I don't know what that was. Where are you? Lich, are you a... Okay, you're right, you are a flying enemy. I'm like, Lich, do you, do you not fly? Do you not, do you not want to come up here? It's clearly the most slowing moving boss in the world, which is fantastic. So if I just aim my boss cursor at this, I should be fine, right? Yeah, this is the, this is the most interesting boss fight I've ever had in Terraria. And it's despawned. Is that my fault? Yes, it is. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop being a moron now and actually do that properly. That was interesting, though. I did think it would uh, get to us in time. I really didn't think it would despawn, but that is what it is. That's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it was a, it was an experiment. I thought it would have been quite funny if we'd have managed to actually get away with it. <laughs> but now that it's failed, it just seems more like a, a time waste. <laughs> okay, Souls of Night. And we also need pumpkins. Do we have pumpkins in here? Okay, the pumpkins are in here. Okay, we'll make we'll make one more. Hey, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, Lich. Good to see you, buddy. We're actually going to fight you this time. I'm really sorry for running away that last time. That's okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for this fight to like start off as like the easiest thing in the world, and then just get like really insane real quick. Like you know for certain that this thing is coming off of me real slow. This thing's about to be like the fastest boss you've ever seen. It's going to get harder and harder to be on this rope in a minute. Yeah, I thought so. Oh my god, 28 damage really for a rope attack? Oh, I made it despawn again. <laughs> oh no, I actually didn't want to do that. I think I've got enough to to redo it. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have to stop messing around here. I'm going to have to. This is just too much. Watch this. The second it sees me, it KOs me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's it. That's the fight over. I just want to get to the crazy phase. It's got to have some kind of mad phase to it. It can't be like this, where I'm just kind of, uh... Basically, like, avoiding all of the shots. You despawned again, Lich! Come on! Like, I wasn't even messing around that time. Oh my god! <laughs> we are fighting this thing right here, right in base. We're not leaving it at all. This thing never leaves our sight because clearly it's very temperamental. It wants to be fought in a certain way. So uh, that's not Thorian's fault, you know. This wasn't a glitch. I was uh, moving too far away, which is fine. If it wants you to stay close and uh, and that's what you need to do, don't worry, I respect the mod for it. I just thought it'd be cool to fight it in a, uh, in like a, a nice smooth area. But I do expect this fight to, to get kind of crazy. And that's probably why it wants you to be so close. I don't know. But uh, it was worth the extra um, crafting stuff just to kind of goof around with it a little bit. So that's cool. So I thought of a really uh, a really cool idea earlier. Something I want to do for the next series that we do on Chippy's Couch. So as you all know, I love yo-yos. And I've been saying for many, many months I want to do a modded yo-yo series. And I would probably do it like my original yo-yo series from many years ago, where I have to collect every single yo-yo. Now the thing is, is what mod do you use when you're doing a modded yo-yo run? Do you do Calamity? Do you do Thorium? Do you do, I don't know, Juice? Do you do Locomotion? Or whatever that one is called, I'm really sorry. I can't remember the name, but it was great. I enjoyed it in the Mega Mod Pack. But yeah, that being said, which one do you use? So I came up with a plan to decide which one to use. So I think what I'm going to do is, in the future, I'm going to put out a video where we take a look at every pre-hard mode yo-yo in each mod, and then I'll have you guys decide based on which one looks the coolest. Oh, okay, right, I lost that. That's fine, I was talking over that quite a bit. But I'll have you guys decide on which one is, like, the coolest, and then we'll go from there. So it could be Calamity, could be Thorium, who knows? I don't know, right, I've got to do that again and properly, but you can see why they make you do it in a certain area now, because they want that flame attack. Oh, is that a golden, a golden buddy? Is it really? See you later, golden buddy. Okay, so it's a brand new day, and I decided to do this properly, because I did just talk over a boss fight and lose, which I know is like everybody's pet hate. Kind of like when radio presenters turn down the song a little bit to sing. That really gets under my skin, I feel like that's the equivalent, talking over a boss fight and then losing. It's like, come on, stay focused. So I'm going to do this properly. So I went to the uh, jungle. I got some Chlorophyte. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of that. And it's only 32 bars, but that's fine. 
I also got some Valadium. I didn't touch on this, but this is what generated after we did Cosnix. So apparently it holds gravitational power, which sounds amazing. And, uh, and I had a little Google of it, and you can make yourself some axes, which is cool. So, <laughs> I meant this. I meant throwing axes, not an actual axe. So, I'm going to craft a hundred of those, because I just want to see what these look like. Okay, so these are the ones where they fall short, and then I'm guessing you have to land them on the head. So, kind of what I was touching on earlier. Ooh. Deals 50% increased damage and inflicts light curse when fallen from an arc. So if you can do this and land it on a head, you'll do more, which is great. I mean, it's not what I'm going to use because I'm not really great with stuff like that. But then there's also the tomahawks, which we already know we love because we've used a few tomahawks around here. So let me throw these. Yeah, they're just tomahawks. We love them. We love them. Okay, so yeah, this will be the proper fight. I'm going to actually do this uh, seriously now. Okay, real serious fight time. It's now night time, and we shall begin. Oh my god, Lich. Did you really have to hit me with that straight out the gate? Let me uh, try and use some of these actual throwing tomahawks, since they are kind of like meant to be used. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the thing is, not contact damage. You have to get them on the arc. So you have to go above them, essentially. Would I say that that trade-off is worth it for the damage when we could be doing this? I would say no. <laughs> this weapon's just great. So I feel like, though, you're meant to get those uh, those Valadium ones before you even do the mechanical bosses. So that being said, it probably is really, really good. Let me try the, uh, the, the green Tomahawks as well. These do pretty well. You have to get, once again, pretty close, just like a lot of other, a lot of other throwing weapons. Okay, so I'm hoping I can, uh, I'm hoping I can do this. And I am going to do this seriously. <laughs> so I think, I think maybe the trick is like staying ahead of the, uh, the little flaming ball thing, maybe. Does it, does it fire four and then cycle back on itself? Is that what that's doing? It's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. All right, we finally got hit. <laughs> I want to avoid getting hit, but I've been doing pretty well so far. Okay, going great. Once it hits, though, it hits really hard. That is one thing I'll say about it. Okay, so now there's two of them. So it's not just one, it's two. Okay, we're getting uh, exhausted, and my throwing weapons are all kind of long range, which is not what you want for this. So I'm just going to wait a little bit. Heal up, and I've despawned it. Oh, I'm... Oh. Okay, so fresh fight, of course, because we keep despawning them, which is not something I'm intentionally doing. It's just kind of, like, happening. And I am still trying. I'm, like, going for the serious approach. So what I'm trying to do at the minute is I'm trying to basically loop the boss, and I'm hoping that that'll work, but there are clearly quite a lot of attacks that are still getting me. Um, <laughs> all right, I've run out of... Uh, Run out of exhaustion then. Okay, it's all getting a little bit too much. So I might have to, to focus in a little bit more. Okay, now it's getting uh, super fast, super crazy. This is the <laughs> this is the lich I wanted when, when I was like kind of moving away from it a little bit. Oh my god, that got amazing. So I think I am going to end it there for the lich for today. I'll come back at this tomorrow even stronger. But that was cool. Like I had a good time fighting that. And... Uh, and just seeing what kind of uh, chaos kind of uh, popped up during that. So I think, yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. Guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. Like I said, I hope you all had a great weekend. I promised you all some boss madness, and I feel like I delivered on that front. So yeah, that yo-yo video will be coming up. Hopefully, I'll have that up in a day or two. And then you guys can start deciding early so that we can get the series ready and out on time. Okay, right. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.